How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going over all the changes that came with this patch. Jormungandr will get a separate video. For now, we're just focusing on the implementation of the dodge changes. The general mood regarding this patch seems rather negative among the people I talk to, but you also get many people that fully defend all these changes. It's been a while since we've had the community so split on an issue. I've given you my opinion on this plenty in the past, so I'll try and stay more objective and just explain the changes and how they will affect your gameplay. The patch notes will be linked down in the description, so you can also read up on it in case I don't explain it properly. I'll do the video in a slightly different order though. First change I want to talk about is guard during dodge, as it's probably the most controversial one and I expect people to adapt to it rather quickly, despite being quite against the change at the moment. So the clips you are seeing right now are from pre-patch and showcase the different guard types that we had. It's not just static and reflex, but static guard had a few variations. You can see how on Warden the guard position stayed exactly where you parked it, no matter what direction you dodge in. This was used to defend against blue orange mixups a lot, park your guard top and block a top undodgeable while avoiding a bash because you dodged. Other heroes like TND changed their guard with the dodge direction, but had the block property throughout the dodge. And then Valkyrie had the superior block property during the dodge, but lost the block property on anything but that 200ms window. So it was very much like a deflect on reflex guard heroes. Reflex guard worked the same on all heroes. I am not aware of any differences between the assassins. The flecked window was the same on everybody. Now on the current life patch, static has exactly two different variations. For one, Valks for the superior block characters. With that change, they also reduced the windows and standardized them on all of them. So Kensei and Conquerors basically had theirs nerfed. But that change made sense. Why should they have 500ms windows of superior block during the dodge really? And the other option is simply no guard at all. The whole dodge duration means no guard. You have the normal amount of iframes, but no block frames. The middle ground that was suggested after the testing rounds was to have just normal block for the same 200ms, similar to the superior block dodge heroes, or even inferior block, meaning no attack would bounce off, similarly to your block when you are out of stamina. It would provide a little bit of extra safety, yet not allowed to negate whole mix-ups like before. The patch notes also had this sentence here. Heroes regain their defense 100 ms after being able to change their stance during the dodge. This one was probably just as confusing to you as it was for me. In the initial testing rounds, there was a bug where side dodge guard recovery was 900 ms and a guard swap would shorten that time to 733. And since I wasn't sure what the patch notes meant, I recorded this pre-patch as well, without even remembering that I've listed this as an issue during the testing round. And well, turns out that this wasn't just on the testing rounds, that was a thing on life as well, since forever probably, changing guard after a dodge would allow you to block earlier compared to when you let your guard come up in the initial position. And a 166ms difference is quite significant here. But I have good news, this is what it is now. No matter if you let your guard come up or change it during the dodge, you recover it at 733ms every time. This gives you more safety at the end of it compared to pre-patch. But moving on. After all this, they did add something quite significant to dodges as well. Pre-patch, if you dodged into obstacles, you would lose all iframes. Now, you can still avoid attacks, especially bashes, if you are stuck in the corner or boxed in by players or minions, for example. And Ubisoft did fix the issue where opposing minions would interrupt the iframes during the dodge with an attack. That was an issue when we initially tested these changes and it seems to be fixed now. For one, minions seem to make room for you when you dodge. At least it seems that way to me, even if only a little. I'd love to hear what you guys think here. Let me know if I'm just remembering wrong. On back dodges though, the minions still seem to have more of an impact, but I can't say for sure either. 
All in all, minions shouldn't body block you, nor delete your iframes any longer. Then moving on, the dodge attack property change. All dodge attacks, with the exceptions of Jungjun's Mighty Backslash, Tindy's Dragon Dodge, and Warmonger's Beast of Prey, now count as a light attack when you parry it. The three exceptions I just listed are the feintable dodge attacks. All others are now a light, not the input, just the property. Kensei, Griffin, Highlander, Magi, it's all light parries now. No other property but feintability was taken into consideration. If you parry them, you get your big punish. To keep the high punish ability of all side dodge moves, some side dodge bashes were also adjusted. Noticed how I said some, because we are very far from having parity on these. What changed? Well, for one, their speed has been up to 600 ms. Some like Conqueror's or Shugoki's headbutt used to be 533, but are now 600. This brings them in line with Gladiator side dodge bash, for example. The only one that gets to stay 533 ms is Lawbringers, for whatever fucking reason. The big armored man that deserved to get hyper armor because of all that armor is now also the one that moves the fastest. Loving the logic that's applied here. And yes, that was a joke in case someone couldn't tell. The ability to chain on whiff after side dodge bashes was also removed. This affects Shugoki and Gladiator mostly. This was with the intention to give a guard break to the one dodging the bash. Thus, the recovery values on some of them were increased. All of them are 900 ms now. The patch notes gave us different values, particularly for Conqueror who's supposed to have worse recovery, but in terms of guard break, they are all the same now. We do measure them a little differently than the devs, but they are all equal now. In short, you bait it out, you dodge, you get the guard break. Defensive mix-ups like Shinobi's where they can avoid the dodge attack with a backflip, but open themselves up to a guard break, but well, that no longer exists on the side dodge version. You dodge, you get the guard break. I am personally curious about the numbers here, whether people actually do that now, or if it's still all dodge attacks all the time. Same as the percentage of these side dodge bashes being dodged in the first place. I can't imagine the number changing at all, neither at the top or at the bottom, despite the significant nerfs. The top has always dodged them when baiting them out and the bottom never dodges. We'll never know. Then the input window for dodge attacks. These were quite varied in the past, but most, but not all, are now 200 to 400 ms into the dodge. Exceptions are JJ's, both of TND's, Ward and Shoulder Bash, and then Warmonger's Claw, Beast of Prey. I'll put the values on the screen. All right, let me explain for a second why I am disappointed here. For one, Watch my Shun Hu video, he is the perfect example why nuance is so important here. But then, I don't know whether I need to blame myself here for misunderstanding or for Ubisoft selling me on something that in hindsight wasn't true. So the premise of this change initially was that the 200 to 400 value should become the new standard. Out with all the static windows, unless they're absolutely needed. The 200 to 400 would become a new minimum and depending on the strength or need of a dodge attack, they can also have bigger windows or a slightly shifted one. That's why initially Shaman or Orochi were supposed to keep their old windows. Which in my opinion was great. I thought this was an amazing change because it for one allowed for more consistent punishes of moves whose recovery were on the lower end and at the same time it allowed for input comfort. Yet it wouldn't be too big a window where we would run into the problem of people differentiating and reacting to mix-ups with late dodge attack inputs. Something we've seen in the past on Berserker for example. But what we got here now in the end is such a watered down version of that premise that just like the standardization of the parry property on the dodge attacks leads to completely over the top or absolute dog shit moves. It might be a slight exaggeration, but I also don't want to repeat myself for the 100th time that dodge attacks needed an individual approach and not a blanket change. I understand that this now could be considered a new baseline and further changes will adjust some up or down. I don't know, seems like a lot of extra work. Oh well, 
Uh, that sums up the implementation of the Dodge testing ground. Which leaves us with the Afira fixes. One of the most requested ones was the feet interaction. The tier 1 confirming the tier 3. And that is no longer the case. They did not shorten the recovery of the target to allow for an earlier dodge, but what they did instead was lengthen the recovery of the Afira using the tier 1. Pre-patch we were looking at the recovery time of 933, which has now been extended to 1100 ms. This makes the tier 3 easily dodgeable now, and don't forget that you do get a guard break here as well. Furthermore, all unintentional confirmed in-gen kicks have been fixed. That is the running heavy into kick for example, both when blocked and when getting hit. That will now allow for a successful dodge. They did lengthen the chain link from attack to the bash, you'll notice immediately the first time you do it after the patch. And the second one was buffered guards which is no longer stop you from dodging either. I haven't been able to recreate it at all now so I'd say an overall successful fix on all fronts here. But yeah that's it. Jormunganda will get his own video like I said. If you want to know anything specific about him let me know and I'll try and incorporate it into the video. Subscribe if you don't want to miss that, comment if something's unclear and otherwise just have a nice day. With that said, hope the video was helpful, thanks for watching, laters everybody.